in a time where resources need to be stretched, how can you be using your data warehouse for more than just analytics? What capabilities as an industry are yet to be realized? And what is the future of the data warehouse? Today, I'm joined by Matt Lovell, Global Director of Data and Insight at pret So hello, Matt, and thank you for joining me today. Now, hi. many of you, hi. Um, many of you are aware of pret myself included, as a wonderful place to pick a cup of coffee and a lovely spot of lunch. But we're not here to talk about food. We are here, however, to discuss data and more specifically, data warehouses. So before we delve into the topic, Matt, do tell us a bit about your role. Sure. So, um, yeah, I'm our Global Director of Data and Insight at Fred Manger. So basically looking after everything to do with data from kind of how we source data and ingest it, to how we govern and protect it, all the way through to what we can do with it from an analytics and reporting perspective. Also, how can we drive actions off the back of that data? Um, so, so, yeah, so it's kind of an end-to-end -end, uh, kind of role working globally. So um, a lot of people won't necessarily be aware, but actually Brett, while very much a British tradition, um, actually exists in uh, the US, France and Hong Kong as well, alongside a range of smaller locations with uh, franchises kind of worldwide. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, it's very much trying to support all of our markets to get the best and to be able to provide that amazing fresh food that uh, everyone loves from us. Well, firstly, I didn't know that it was uh, as global as you've just mentioned, so that uh, you certainly do learn something new every day. Um, and then talking on global, well, not so much global, but, but generally with Pret, as much as I do love to believe that a data warehouse is quite literally a warehouse full of data, which is in part, um, it's in fact, as we know, a system used for reporting data. And um, so... Do you feel that you're using your data warehouse for its maximum value? I think we're progressively getting more and more out of it. I think when people start talking about kind of data warehousing and data lakes and things like that, you can end up getting a bit unstuck on both kind of naming conventions and actually kind of these days there isn't the differences that there once were. Um, we, we largely work with a data lake, but actually it's much more structured data than um, kind of the lakes of the past or the swamps of the past that people refer to were of just dump everything in and we'll deal with it later. Um, we have quite a good process for, for getting that data in and going, actually, we understand what the data is and we understand kind of how to interact with it and use it effectively. Um, so, so that's really, really important for us. But um, the key thing for us is actually uh, a data warehouse is exactly what you said. It, it's basically fundamentally, where do we store our data? Um, and, and fundamentally, if we put our data in a uh, place where people can use it and it can facilitate things, it can power so many things. It isn't just a case of, yeah, a single place to dump everything, but actually it can generate reports, it can be used for analysis, but it can also be used to drive activities. So simple things like uh, we have major production runs every single morning. So all of our fresh food is made that morning from about 5 a.m. so that it's as fresh as possible for our customers. Now, obviously, we can't anticipate the exact number of people that are going to want a tuna niswa salad or a, a kind of one of our particular kind of rye rolls or things like that. So there's a constant need to go, actually, do we need to make more things throughout the day? Now, historically, how would you do that? You would walk up, have a look, go, oh, we're running out of those on that particular lango or kind of we've seen those things through. But actually, we've got that sales data running through. We know exactly what we made in the morning. We know what's out on our shelves and we know what's sold. Um, so actually, how do you use that information to be able to power things, to be able to advise the teams? By lunchtime, you'd normally have sold this many. You sell this many over lunch. You're running short. Can you prep X number of additional ones? Because as much as all of Pret's food... Um, goes to charities at the end of the night if it isn't sold um, we still want to minimize the amount of waste that we end up having sort of thing so it's trying to make sure that we make the right sort of amount of food um, so that's just one example of how the data within our data warehouse can actually power a decision making um, for, for the business and, and that can work across all manner of things um, if I think back to um, kind of a previous incarnation a, a, a old role um, a lot of kind of airports and train stations do huge amounts of stuff by being able to identify when people say that their toilets are dirty through the kind of smiley faces in those toilets. And, and it's, it's how do you start to use that data in closer to real time to actually go, actually, it can inform decisions. And 
And similarly, how do you use that data to help people to make decisions? There's so much going on that where people go, oh, I, I wonder if we could forecast what will happen with this over X period of time. The data's there for people to be able to do it. It's just about structuring it in the best way and trying to anticipate use cases that people may have for it so that you can build your data out in a way that more easily facilitates that. So it definitely sounds like you are using almost the full capacity of your data warehouse. And I guess, do you find yourself almost reevaluating or looking into making sure that you're using it for that maximum value? I mean, are you having constant meetings or is this more of just a, when you feel like checking in, you sort of maybe check in with your team? I think the advantage we have is there are a number of, kind of governance forums within PrEP that people have an opportunity to kind of come to. There's also a lot of showcasing what we've done. So we're never short of people coming back to us and saying, could you do this? Or do we have the data to do that? And I think that's been a really nice shift I've seen over the last probably kind of four or five years across most businesses is you, you had a point where there were people that took the data seriously. Fundamentally, they were largely from data teams or finance teams or technology teams, but actually a lot of the rest of people just assumed that things weren't available. Um, and, and I think the world's changed a bit so that actually people now go, right, well, actually I can, I can ask that question and if it isn't available, it can go onto a list of how do we source this? So one of the big areas for PrEP that we've been actively sourcing data over the past year that I've been there is around market share data and around football data. So how do we have a really clear view of um, how we're doing competitively? Yes, we've had an amazing week in a particular shop in a particular city, but is that just because for some reason there were floods of people into that city centre and actually it's going to drop off next week? Or is that something where actually we're stealing share from other people, we're, we're doing well? And particularly with the advent of our coffee subscription, there was a real desire to understand what impact has that had? Does it mean that people are coming to us more regularly? Um, and if they're coming to us more regularly for their drinks, what impact does that have on what they buy from a food perspective? So if someone has a coffee switching with Pratt and comes in two, three, four times a day for their coffee, are they also buying breakfast? Are they also buying lunch? Um, or, or actually, are we finding they're going elsewhere for that? So I think those sorts of things have been really useful for us to be able to go, actually, we can kind of benchmark ourselves and go, these are the opportunities for growth. But they're things where, when the question was first posed, we, have, we don't really have a view. The things that we can kind of estimate, we can look at, have we seen increases in their behaviour? But actually, we can't see the missing piece of the picture, which is kind of what's happening externally. Um, and I think that's the case across so many things. Um, as another example, we have um, uh, barista screens that basically say what drinks uh, people have ordered. Is that what we're finding with those is the data that powers them is actually now allowing us to be able to go can we streamline the way that things work? No one wants to wait five minutes for their drink. They'd ideally want it in 30 seconds or a minute, particularly in the locations for a lot of threats where people are on the go and they're very much looking to kind of grab it and, and then move on. Um, if that's the case, we need to make sure that we can get them to people as fast as possible. And actually, there are things that we're learning in terms of, can you kind of stagger the way that different baristas work? Can you get them working on particular drinks? Can you get them working in particular ways? That actually means that overall, more people are getting their drink in a timely fashion and you're improving that customer experience. So, so there's, there's all sorts of aspects there where you're going, how do we use that data effectively to drive decision making? And a lot of it is just getting people to constantly pose questions. I'd rather have a long backlog of everything that people want to do um, and just going, right, how do we kind of action this as quickly as possible? Then people kind of twiddling their thumbs going, I assume we haven't got this, so I won't ask. No, it's great because it sounds like you do have everything running from ground level and behind. And you, you very briefly touched on this in terms of other businesses. And I'd say from your varied experience across the various industries, are you starting to see a pattern in maybe how different organizations are using their data warehouses? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think there has been a lot more focus from businesses on going, we have this data. How do we set it up in a way that is much more actionable? So for us, that, that stretches from things like self-service. So basically, how do we enable anyone across the business to be able to go in and pose questions of the data in a way that's easy to use? There are thousands of people in our business, particularly if you include all the shop teams, who do not have the technical skills. They can't code something in SQL. They couldn't build something in kind of a visualization tool. But actually, if we've built a series of templated interactive dashboards that allow them to go, 
I want to see what happened in this shot on this date, or I want to dig into that and go, did this happen because of this? They can answer half the questions themselves and they can at least get part way to go, I had a hypothesis. I've now been able to back it up with data. Hence, I want to do X as the next thing. Um, it just puts the business in a much better place in terms of being able to make decisions. Where I think if you look back historically, there was always this bottleneck of it needed the data team or the BI team, or uh, there was always someone that was responsible for basically unearthing those insights. And actually, it, it's how do we make it much, much easier for teams across the business to be able to do that? Um, there's this kind of notion historically that almost you had to request permission to be able to see data. And if you bear in mind that 95% of the data that we have in our business isn't sensitive, it, it isn't personal data about customers, it isn't something that if kind of someone using the wrong way is going to cause particular harm. So actually, what's the harm in everyone across the business having access to that information so that they can use it to make decisions? Um, so that's the real focus for us is every time we get a new data set, how do we integrate that? And, and similarly, how do we continue to train our teams so that they feel comfortable with things? Because as much as I say, a lot of the self-service capabilities aren't complex for them to use. If you start a threat as a kind of brand newbie and you haven't had that experience in the past, you're still going to feel a bit intimidated by that. So actually, how, how can we work with the teams across the business to go, actually, let's give you the confidence that you can find what you're looking for. And if you've got any questions, let's give you an easy way to be able to raise those. So I guess in a nutshell, you are making access to the data warehouse more user friendly at, at so many different levels. Yeah, it's exactly that. It's kind of so, so much of data being a success in business is a combination of access, storytelling, how do you visualize things so that it works in a way that people can easily understand. We have so much data in our systems and the number of times that I've had someone from a random department say, but can, can you just give me access to everything? And you kind of go, I can, let me show you what I'd be giving you access to. And now let me pose the question of what do you want to see? Because I suspect there's a better way to do that. In that there are some people who will go, actually, you know what? I'll take the raw data because I can play and manipulate that. And, and there are pockets of uh, our business where you go, oh, I've actually uncovered someone who is far more technically savvy than we kind of anticipated. And actually, fantastic. Let's get them building their own things and interrogating things because the other aspect with a data warehouse and kind of data stores more generally is the biggest problem that a lot of businesses have is they are underused and as a result people don't spot problems in them in that fundamentally if data is going in there people aren't going to spend the time making sure it's 100 percent accurate unless someone flags the problems that exist whereas actually the more people you get looking at that data the more likelihood that someone goes oh hang on a sec that's a bit weird why has that happened? Um, and there's been various um, things that I've seen over the past couple of years where new products come in and they're configured in a slightly different way. And actually, if someone hadn't been instantly wanting to go, that new thing that launched last week, how is it performing? And go, that's weird. I can't do what I'd normally do with this. It means we can solve it straight away. And actually, within kind of hours of someone spotting a problem, it's fixed and no one else has that issue. Whereas historically, it would have been something that someone uncovered six months later. And actually, unbeknown to us, it may well have been powering all sorts of other reports. So it, it's trying to introduce though that kind of governance approach and that change approach to be able to go, actually, if anyone spots something that's a bit odd, tell us. Because the sooner we can make it right, the less impact it has on everyone else. So th there's so many advantages to giving people as much kind of access and visibility to that picture as they can. It, it's definitely nice hearing about giving access with that element of governance. And it also sounds that perhaps you do need an element of curiosity to be able to use your, your data warehouse to its fullest, because I suspect lots of data goes unnoticed or unused and just maybe sits there until someone is maybe a bit more curious and stumbles across that element of data. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are so many data sets over the years that I've had conversations with people and they've gone, have you thought about, and, and it's something that no one has even gone, either that even exists or I could connect that with that. And, and it's kind of the world becomes your oyster. And obviously, as you start to extend things out, extend things out, there are aspects that you have to consider. So we have a data privacy officer who kind of is constantly monitoring what's going on to make sure that actually we behave in the right way. Similarly to me, ethics is a really important aspect that we have to kind of bear in mind because there are things that you could start doing that you go, actually, 
probably not right. That's not what customers would expect. But there's also a lot of things where there are things, if we know all sorts of things about what you as a pet customer do, what you buy, what you like, things like that, are you really going to object to us going, let's tailor this and make it more specific to you so that you can have a better experience next time? I don't really think so. And so there's kind of one of those things where it's giving people that choice so that they can absolutely kind of, if they go, oh, that's a bit spooky, I don't want you to know that, there's an easy way to opt out. But at the same time, actually, people want an easier life. Um, we had a recent example with our um, car where it went in for a service. The garage couldn't actually deal with it, so it went to another garage. Having gone through both those processes, it got home, and two days later, we got a note saying, oh, it's due for an MOT. And you just went, how in the world did either of those garages not pick that up and say, do you want us to do the MOT while it's here? Um, and so as a result, it just ended up wasting time. And you just go, actually, if they connected the data up there and got actually, we've got these things logically through. Um, I mean, MOT is a really simple one because actually they can do a search on any car on the government database and go, when's the MOT due? So you kind of go almost as it's booked in, why doesn't the system automatically do that and go kind of flag anything that's worth saying to the customer, would you like us to do X? And, and to me, those are just simple things where you go, if you can manage to engineer it, a customer's going to go, oh, that, that was a great experience. I'll use them again versus going, that was a bit frustrating. They missed this and they didn't do that. And, and kind of, it's really simple things like that. So on our coffee subscription, one of the things that we're trying to work out how to engineer at the moment is things like if people order regular drinks, actually, can we help to inform the person serving them to kind of go, as they say, oh, I want a latte, you can go, oh, and you want it extra hot, or you'd like it with cinnamon on it, or kind of, how do you kind of build those things in so that people can kind of go, actually, my life's made much easier, and particularly with our click and collect offering, or as we refer to it in the US, prep pickup, the more that we can kind of automate those things so that it's a single click to reorder, people are going to go, oh, it's so easy, why wouldn't I do this? Data with a bit of personal touch on the side, which I think very important and um i guess you, you've kind of partly touched on this but for anyone who are maybe not as far forward in their journey of data as you are what would you say that maybe their key considerations would have to be when kind of building out their own data, data warehouse i think the biggest thing is is kind of trying to look at doing something as early as they can in the, if they've got data get it into somewhere where it can be used and can be analyzed even if you can't actually look at it going the kind of whole hog is there something that you can do to kind of start to get people to be able to look at things? Um, because if you can manage to do that, you can suddenly make it much, much more effective. Um, the other aspect I, I would kind of flag to people is it, it kind of, if you don't need to kind of boil the ocean, try and do something that's relatively simple in the first instant um, so that you've got the core data set and you can start analyzing it. People kind of go, oh, let's try and ingest everything to the nth degree. The other aspect is there are, are definitely more and more data sets where you go, if I want to ingest this, it becomes more difficult to govern. When you start talking about things that kind of are available in real time or things like that, a prime example for us is kind of anything that you get from things like kind of social media comments, things like that. If you try and kind of categorize and sort and kind of turn that into something really useful up front, it's probably not going to work. If you accept that some of the fields that you're going to get are going to be free text and You'll need to deal with them at some point, but actually capture them in that vein. And yes, it's not something that people can analyze to the nth degree from day one, but actually it's something that you've at least then got there. Because the biggest problem that a lot of businesses have is that, that their immediate thing is, well, we don't have that until time. And a lot of the time it isn't, we didn't have the opportunity to get that data. So it's just, we never thought about it at the time. Um, I think the, the other aspect is kind of thinking kind of future wise, everything these days is in the cloud and so therefore kind of try and avoid building a kind of standalone database data warehouse that sits on a server um, in, in your offices because you're just going to end up making your life difficult um, whereas actually it's so easy to connect whether it's into google or aws or sure um, and relatively cheap in the first instance sort of thing so actually just getting yourself set up and going actually let's just try pulling some of the data in and, and start getting to a point where we can do things. I think the other aspect is just a lot of companies will go well I, I haven't got anyone that knows how to do it and I think one of the things that I found of late is there is so much available to people in terms of opportunities to learn whether it's the kind of 
wealth of courses on things like LinkedIn Learning, all the way through to all of the uh, apprentice opportunities that there are. Um, and fundamentally, um, there are some amazing apprenticeships out there where people can learn a lot of the basics to make themselves be able to do all sorts of things with data. And actually, you position that to kind of some of your more junior members in any team, and they'll see it as a real opportunity because most people see that kind of they're going to need to use more and more data, and even if they don't want to become a data specialist themselves, at least having that understanding gives them an opportunity for the future. And you've definitely, definitely touched on this, but I mean, in your opinion, what would the future of the data warehouse be? I think it's something that, as, as time goes by, will very much continue to support, will continue to grow. I think there are aspects that you need to bear in mind in terms of the operational nature of it. What things do I need to be able to act on now, straight away, as soon as something comes through? So if someone makes a purchase in one of our shops, we may want to act on that in a particular way to ask them how their experience was, to kind of update them on things. Or similarly, if we can see from their app that they are walking past one of our shops or things like that, can we offer them something to entice them in? That needs to be real time. There are a lot of other things that really don't need to be. And I think there's a real thing about latency that needs to be thought through because you could end up spending a fortune as a business trying to make sure you ever have everything up to the latest second. And actually, if you're not going to use it in that way, there's no major value. Um, and the more data that you get, the more time it's going to take to process. So it's just worth bearing in mind that actually there are probably different ways that you can work in terms of what you need to do operationally versus what you need to do from an analytical and reporting perspective. And just kind of agreeing those kind of compromises. And you can always change it as time goes by. If you find that you get something on a daily basis, but it's not often enough, you can make it hourly or every 15 minutes or kind of whatever level you want. But it's kind of almost don't bite off too much if you're not going to make good use of it or else you're suddenly for a huge amount of cost for the business and they won't see the reward. And I think a key thing with the kind of data side of most businesses is trying to make that value case, trying to demonstrate that actually we are adding more value than we're costing to the business. And it should be easy, but actually a lot of people really struggle and part of that is because they build out this monstrosity of a kind of data function before they've actually started giving things back to the business to allow them to process. So I'm guessing you're quite excited for the future of where data warehouses can go in general, or just yeah, practice. absolutely. I, th I think the opportunities in data generally for businesses are, are huge, and uh, I think it's kind of yeah. Uh, I think to me, it's just fascinating to see how far things go. In, in years. Well, I really enjoyed listening about data warehouses. I'm certainly more excited about seeing how businesses and brands evolve with that, and I'd like to thank you for joining me today. Mm -hmm.